Greetings, everyone. If you have Word 2013 or newer, so 2013 or 2016, and that's for a PC, sorry, not for the Mac, you can map content controls without having to do any computer programming, which is a great thing. I've shown how to do this with document properties before with older versions of Word or the newer ones, which works great. But using document properties, you're limited to the properties that come with Microsoft Word. So today I'm going to show you how you can do it without those limitations. So you can use as many content controls as you want, and you can have as many of any type as you want. For example, with the Word document properties, there's only one date field. So if you have two or three dates you're trying to keep track of, the document properties won't work. So there are a few steps involved, a little more than your average document, but I'll show you. The first thing is you need to make what's called a custom XML part, and that will get attached to your document. Now, I'm just going to show you what it looks like and then show you where I got the information myself on how to do this. And you can essentially just copy the structure of what I have and then put your own stuff in it. So let me show you. I'm going to use Notepad. You want to use a text editor to do this. And if you don't have a text editor that you use or you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, if you have Windows 7 or newer, you can just click on your Windows Start button and just start typing the word Notepad. That comes with Windows. And then when you see it, you can click that and it will run the Notepad program. Now I've actually already got one started here. And this is the little custom XML part that I'm talking about. So it's just text. And what you have is you have some identifying information up here. Oops, not that. And then you have a closing for it. And then in between are your pieces of information that you want to keep track of in the document. So I'll add another one here. I've got name, date of birth, date of accident. And let's say you want to keep track of uh, the insurance company. You could make your own. So you can just look at these and see how they're created. It's a less than, greater than, and then in between that is the name. I'll just say insurer. That's the opening of it. And then here's the closing of it is the same thing, but you have a forward slash, the one on your question mark key. And there. So the person who inspired this video had wanted three different dates that they could repeat in the document, but they were separate from each other. So if they wanted to add another date field, they could come down here. And Let's say maybe we want the date they got their insurance policy. So I'll just do DOP. You can name them anything you want. You know, I could make it longer if I wanted to. But I'm the only one who's going to be using this, so I'm fine with the abbreviations. Although they do need to match. DOP, and I need my forward slash. Now, the rest of this here, up here we have the XML version, encoding, standalone. Honestly, I really don't know the details of where the information comes from. Here is the web page where I found this. And this guy, Greg Maxey, he has some awesome stuff on the internet that I've seen. You can see the web address up here, Greg Maxey, MVPs org, and then word tip pages is where this particular one comes from. Anyhow, I got it from him. So I'm really just copying what he put and it's down here. So I don't really know exactly where this stuff what it means, where it comes from. This is called a namespace where it says XMLNS, and then this is the namespace he used. You can really put anything you want. It just needs to be something unique, I believe, that identifies it. So it really doesn't matter what you put. Uh, so I'll put for mine, um, I'll just put my name, one, two, three, four, five. So it really doesn't matter what you put there. Right here where it says test XML node, that's kind of the name of it. You'll see when we get into Word how it uses that. And then here's the end of that. Okay, that is saved. Now for the exciting part, let's go into Microsoft Word. I'm using Word 2016, but this will also work with Word 2013. So I went ahead and pre-filled some little placeholders in where we can put the information because the important thing to you is not how do I type in a Word document, it's how do I get these repeating bits of text. So we need to go to the developer ribbon. Now your developer ribbon may not be on. 
I'll show you how to turn that on and off at the end of this video so I don't waste time with it right now. But let's say you have your developer ribbon. You will have a mapping group if you're in Word 2013 or 2016. And then you can click this XML mapping pane. It magically appears. Now the first thing we need to do is link this to our XML part. When I look over here at this drop down, there are three parts that come with Word and you can't delete those or remove them. You could mess around with them and use them, but we're doing our own part. So now I just need to go find it. And for once I paid attention and know where it is. So I'm just linking to it. Oh, by the way, the first time you do this, I guess I should say what I'm doing. I clicked the drop down and then I said I want to add a new part. I don't want to use one of the built-in ones. Then I browse out to it. Now I can see it. It's a text file, but originally I couldn't because this was filtering just for Word documents. So by default this may only be looking for things in and DOCX. So just choose this, change this to all files and then you'll see it once you get to the right folder. Just choose it, open, and voila! It's now available. So now I want to use it. So I go back to my drop down list and there it is. The little name I gave it that I told you you could name it basically anything you wanted. Now I'm using it and you can see, well this is the node, but these are the fields I guess we could call them, the parts. So now I can insert these into the document wherever I want them. So for name, I'll put the name in and I've got some tabs here. I want to go to the end of these tabs. Let me turn that off though because it's kind of busy looking. That was show hide. By the way, I was pressing control shift eight on my keyboard to turn that on and off if, if you care. To add the name, I right clicked on name and this popped up. So I'm choosing that content control and then I'm saying what it is. I'll just say this is plain text. It pops it in. Now date of birth, let's do same thing. Right click insert it, only this time I'm going to say it is a date picker because it's for a date. And then I'll do the same for date of accident. Right click, insert, date picker. And you could do other things like drop down lists where you add them. I'm not going to get into all the details, but there are all these different types of content controls that you can put into a document. And in fact, I won't even bother doing these last two. I'll just show you with these. Now looking at these content controls, if I click on one to select it, I can grab the little handle and go to properties up on my developer ribbon and you can name them and give them tags and have some control over whether they can be deleted or not. It's different things you can do here. But none of that is actually necessary for our purpose today. Now I would name them so that I could keep track of them in real life, but today I'll just show you that I can just copy and paste these places and you'll see what happens. So when I want to copy one of these, I want to grab it by that little handle and I'll do a right click copy, put my mouse over it. After I grab the handle, I put my mouse over the middle of it right click, choose copy. This seems to work pretty well. And now every place I want the person's name to appear, I'm going to paste it. So control V on my keyboard is paste, which is what I'm doing. And here's where I want the person's name again. I just type these little underscores in to have a place for pasting them. And then I'll do the was involved the date of accident is the date that we're looking for. So I will copy that one, grab it by the handle, right click the middle of it, and then choose copy. Now I'll paste that. The accident was on this date. This is the date they were born on, so I don't want it there. And this is the date of the accident. Again, it was not a good day. They are okay though. It's important to know that. Um, okay, date of birth, I would like to have appear right here. Now, if you're actually setting up a form or a document, you wouldn't just put these all up here at the top like this. I just did this to illustrate. You know, you would have your form or document and wherever you needed them, you'd put them. So you put the first one where you first needed it 
and then copy and paste it. Or you might temporarily put things up at the top here and copy and paste them and then later just delete that text out. Just however you want your form set up. All right, they're in there. What happens if we use them? Well, let's see what happens if I type here where it says name. I'll use my name, lack of imagination. As Soon as I leave this field, I can press tab or click out of it. You can see that down here, wherever I had put that pasted copy of this, it updates. And let's do the date as well. So we have a date picker, so date of birth. It was some time ago, but we'll just go back a little ways in time here. I could have just typed it in as well. But you can see it filled it in both places and then date of accident. We'll say it just happened today. And you can see it filled it in where the date of accident. Oh, yes, you can see it filled the date of accident in. So you can see how it works. Uh, now, I can turn this off. I don't need this once I've made the form. And I can save this document. I'll just name it test document. I've saved a few test docs in my day. I'll just save over the last one. You could send this to someone, move it to another computer. It's going to keep working. So when you're in that document, you will have those fields working as long as you're using a version of Word that works with the content controls. I'm not sure if it will work on a Word for Mac or not. I'll have to open it on one and test. OK, there's my document. And if I go make a change, oh, by the way, I should illustrate you can change anywhere. So I'll come down here and change, put my middle initial in. And you see they all updated. So you don't have to, the person editing the document could be changing any one of those content controls. If I go to my developer ribbon again and I choose design mode, then you can see where the content controls are in the document. Just an easy way to see. OK, so how did I get this developer ribbon up if anybody doesn't have that showing already? Well, there are a few ways. Probably the most straightforward, though not the fastest, is to go to File, Options, Customize the Ribbon, and you will see Developer. If By default, it's not checked in Word, so originally you'll just not have the developer ribbon. But if I go here, 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 there it is. And now I say OK, and voila, one developer ribbon coming up. I hope this helps. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.